Selkirk welcomed Mar to Philip Hall, with the visitors needing a win to keep them in the race for a playoff place, and the home side looking to maintain their position in the top four. And the match couldn't have started any better for the suitors, when Mar's return kick from the kickoff gave Selkirk a chance to attack, and Ryan Cottrell soon found space before assisting Josh Welsh, who touched down for an unconverted try whilst the crowd were still taking their seats. The scoreboard was then soon changed to 8-0 when Aaron McComb struck a penalty for Selkirk. Despite the strong start from the home outfit, Marr grew into the game from then onwards and it was through Colin Sturgeon that the deficit was reduced to two through a brace of penalty kicks from similar positions before the break. The start of the second half saw Selkirk dominate and when they showed confidence in their attacking abilities by choosing to go for the corner rather than kick a goal, the result in driving Maul left Marr scrambling and Andrew Cochran crashed over the line for an unconverted score. Momentum swung again, however, and Marr levelled the scores at 13 apiece shortly after, when Conor Bickerstaff struggled his way over the line under the posts and Sturgeon added the extras. Marr knew this was a must-win game to keep their playoff hopes alive, and in the latter stages of this contest, you could certainly see that. Not long before the finish, they managed to get themselves in front for the first time in the match, when a cross kick into space was picked up by Scott Bickerstaff, who didn't have much to do to secure the try. So it's Marr who take the win in this one, and now only three points separate these two sides in the race for the fourth playoff place, and Selkirk have a tough fixture next week as they travel to second place Curry. But here at Wild and Windy Philip Hall, it finishes Selkirk 13, Mar 18. It was good. Good to get that try, just simple rugby, and that's what we're trying to trying to play. And uh was he walking in, in the corner, so uh it's good to see what we've been practicing on Tuesday, Thursday coming into uh into the game. Yeah, and Mar worked their way back into it. You know, you guys had probably most of the first 10 or 15 minutes. Mar worked their way back into it. There, there, there seemed to be a few penalties racking up there. I mean, just discipline, eh? Uh, got them into the game. Uh, even at the end there, got got down the field uh, through the kicks and then won the line out. So, uh, something we need to look at, discipline. You went down the tunnel, 8-6 to the good. What was said down there at halftime? Uh, same same message, just simple rugby. Obviously playing playing against the wind a bit harder. Uh, try not to kick as much. Try to play a bit more, which we did, and we got a bit of joy out of that. But then again, just mistakes as well. Yeah, and it was it was it was a nip and tuck second half. There wasn't much in it. Th the injury list here at Philip has just started to lengthen a wee bit. It, was that a contributing factor as the match? What wore on? Do you think? I mean, uh, the injury list keeping keeping up. Couple of big names missing: James Head, Ross Nixon, Andrew McComb. Uh, they would all made a difference today. Then Donald, Donald Nickel going off early. Uh, but I mean, credit to the boys that are coming on off the bench. Not much rugby, but putting a, putting in a good shift. So uh, good to see. Yeah, and on a personal level, Monroe. Obviously, it's been a big week for yourself. Congratulations, first of all, Thank from all much. of us here Thank at Borders you. Radio and Borders TV. You've been. Accepted on the you know the very prestigious McPhail scholarship. You must be absolutely thrilled. Oh no, I'm buzzing. Can't wait to go. Uh, week on Monday, so better get packing. But uh, no, can't can't wait to go. Really excited. So yeah, and explain to us what 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 it entails. What actually what actually happens once you're down there? Uh, so just five months of rugby, really. Um, I think it's two months of uh, pre-season uh, and then three months of games. So just train train with the boys and gym and. Uh, see what happens enjoy myself yeah and some big names have been some, on the scholarship yeah, I mean, you, you, you know and you, you, you look at you look at that list it must be very exciting possibly following in the footsteps of the likes of John Barkley who've uh, been John Barkley Finn Russell Johnny Gray so uh, really big names so that does excite me um, obviously massive boots to fill so uh, I'll just see what happens yeah well we wish you all the very best for that Monroe same, we offer the same to the other two lads that are heading down there as well. And thanks, thanks very much. much for joining us up here this afternoon.